The last day that anyone saw Tara Edwards or James Gibson, both 17 years old, alive, was July 23rd, 2013. The two were best friends who had known each other since they were in preschool. The only thing that we truly know about what happened to the two of them is what we got from some photos and video found on Tara's camera. We also know the approximate timeline of the events that happened by those items and interviews with family and friends of the two and the police officers involved in the case. What has been pieced together is the story that follows. Tara and James told their parents that they were going to pack a lunch and go explore a local cave known as La Cueva del Diablo, the Devil's Cave. They were particularly excited about going to explore because they had just started a YouTube channel together and its focus was on visiting reportedly haunted locations. They were located in the southeastern part of the country and they knew that they could make a lot of videos at a lot of different sites with traveling only a few hours from their own home. As most haunted sites, this came with its own legend. The Mexican people who once lived here had spoken of the monstro, or monster, who had lived in the cave. It was said that sometimes, and they never knew for certain when, because months and often years would pass before finally, on the eve of the full moon, the monster would come out of the cave during the stillness of the night, grab a child, and dragged them back to the cave. The villagers would never even hear a noise, but in the early morning hours, they would then find the bloody drag marks from the village to the mouth of the cave. They tried to cast spells on the monster by riding on the rock walls and performing intricate dances, but nothing worked, and eventually the villages relocated. But it is said that sometimes, late at night, you can hear the hungry monster growling and snarling a hideous noise from deep within the belly of the cave. Their video started off with the two of them introducing themselves and welcoming the people to their channel. They then told the legend of La Cueva del Diablo and set out in Tara's truck. Most of the trip was filmed. It was assumed that their plan had been to edit the footage later. Eventually, we see the two climb into the mouth of the cave. Tara says that she's a little scared, and James teases her. They both take out flashlights and head into the cave. From then on, for about 15 minutes, the footage is shaky, and the sound cuts in and out, before it comes back into focus, and we see the pair next to some odd drawings in the cave. One was what appeared to depict a large cloud of swirling smoke, coming from the cave and encircling what was possibly a woman or maybe a child. There were figures holding weapons, sharp stones, knives made from animal bones. There was red dripping from the smoke entity and then another depicting the smoke entity with arms stretching out, perhaps an open mouth. There was a woman holding a baby, then the smoke taking it from her hands, then her on her knees begging. The smoke enveloped the child. There were markings, scratches, X's, rectangles, circles, all around these drawings, and the two surmised that possibly this had been the curse on the monster. The two were talking about their find, snapping pictures, and posing in front of the dark cave wall when James's flashlight went out. So he started using his phone's light, the video goes on for several more minutes before they seem to come to a dead end. It was in the shape of a half circle, and there were what appeared to be ashes atop the sandy cave floor. Tara mentioned it as the two decided to stop and sit down to eat their lunch while James looked for his extra set of batteries that he was sure he had brought. They weren't in his bag, and police later found them unopened on his kitchen table. Then... Tara's flashlight goes out, too, and she's heard swearing and mentioning the fact that she had placed brand new batteries in her flashlight before she'd packed her bag. Nonetheless, the brightness of James's phone was dimming. Tara was suddenly startled. She was heard saying, James, stop! To which he replied, What? I didn't do that. 
At this point, we couldn't hear or see what they were speaking of. And it wasn't until several minutes later when Tara is asking him with a shaking voice what that noise is and where it is coming from. She's saying that it seems to be everywhere, and we finally hear a growling noise or something similar. It sounded like the combination of a growl and the noise of a hawk when it screeches, and it was bone-chilling. James's phone died, and we hear the two whisper about trying to remember their way out. We can barely see that the camera is moving when the motion is caught by the light of Tara's phone. They aren't sure if they are going the right direction, and the noise is now loud enough that it gets harder to hear the pair's voices, but we can clearly hear that they are scared. They are panicking. James is breathing fast and near hyperventilation. Tara is crying and yelling that she has to get out. She has to get out. She doesn't know where they are, and she is terrified. Finally, James tells Tara to sit down to put her back up against the wall, and it sounds as if the two are in some type of room with an entrance because James tells her to keep her eye on the opening and to wait for him. Then we hear him talking and her crying, but it can't be made out what they are saying. Tara's phone light goes off, and we don't hear James anymore. Sixty minutes later, we are still hearing that noise, that demonic noise bouncing off the cave walls, and Tara begins to talk to her camera. Mom, Dad, Stevie, Jackson, I love you. James is going to get us out. I know, but I'm just so scared. I, I just need to talk to someone. She's talking to the camera, but we cannot see her. It's so cold. It's been so long since James left. I hope he's out. I, I hope he's getting help. He told me to stay here until he comes back, but it's so cold. And I didn't bring anything to keep me warm. Mom, the noise. What is it, Mom? I'm so scared. I need you, Dad. Please, let James find help. Please. Mom, I swear I'll make my bed every day when I get out of here. She manages to joke. It's at this point where we hear a scream, the scream of pure terror, pain, excruciating pain. It's James. He's begging God for help, and it lasts for four agonizing seconds that one can never unhear, that will keep those who have heard it up at night and bring dreams of unmentionable suffering. There's a scuffling noise that can be heard on the camera's microphone, but no one is sure what it was. It wasn't until three weeks later that the body of Ted Tara Edwards was found, preserved in an unnatural position. Her knees pulled up to her chest, her eyes wide open, as was her mouth, her face frozen in terror. No one knows what the last thing that Tara Edwards saw, but the coroner said that it scared her to death. She had, at the young age of 17 years old, died of a massive heart attack, her lungs full of ash. The body of James Gibson has never been located. Thank you for coming to my channel. If you like my stories, please subscribe and Please give my video a thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified of my content when it's uploaded, please click that bell next to the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.